What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited for checking out Florenza from Placentia Games. This is for two to five players, taking about 90 minutes to two hours to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. I think it's released in America from Eagle Griffin Games. And in Florenzia, you're going to be playing a uh, city builder, I think, who's tasked with hiring people to do artwork all around the city of Florenza. It is a very thematic worker placement game with lots of moving parts and lots of moving pieces which i enjoy heavily thematic i enjoy worker placement and i enjoy heavy meaty games but is this one good let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of florenza so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet 22 pages double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples very well done and in fact the last like six or seven pages you're not really going to use because it's just going to tell you specifically what all the different buildings do and also the history of the different characters in the game because this is a very thematic game about this city or state or country or wherever it is uh, i'm assuming america when it comes to that aspect in Florenza, you are going to be gaining victory points by placing your workers on various different spots to gain cubes, to uh, recruit new workers, to go up on the religion track, which is all the way down here, to go up on the victory point track, which is right down here, to hire workers over here, which are actually artists, and to do a whole bunch of other various different things. Now, there is a lot going on in this game, as you can tell right now. I'm going to do my best to give you a brief overview of how everything works, and hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to understand what is going on. So, first we're going to start off with the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. So the big thing here is going to be your board, which is right here. And everybody's going to have the exact same board that will look like this. And this is kind of be, going to be your area. You will have four pieces of art you can create over here, and four pieces of art down here that you can create. If you do those, you'll be rewarded with victory points immediately, and also victory points at the end of the game. If you don't do that, you will lose victory points at the end of the game. You know, the people in your city expect you to make it look pretty, and if you don't, you're going to have to pay the punishment on the right side over here you're going to have eight different spots where you can put various different buildings that you will be able to purchase how you purchase them well you're going to put a worker on them and then you will pay the cost listed on the back now at the beginning of the game you're going to get two to start off with and you can either do this uh by the way the rules say if it's like your first game or you could draft them i personally like drafting them because then you can kind of start your machine running a little bit early but let's take a look at it pretty self-explanatory you put your dude on this one it's going to give you a white cube when you take your guy off uh, this one, you are going to be able to sell a brown cube and get 200 bucks. Now, one interesting thing I want to mention, in case I forget to later, because I'm going to be talking about a lot of things, is the order which you place these is very important. Because when you actually do the action, you will do action one, then action two, then action three, then action four, then action five, all the way down to eight if you have that many. So the order in which you uh, do these can be very important from time to time. So that's going to be your board right there. Oh, last but not least, you're going to have this spot right here in the middle. This is where you're going to put your money, where you're going to put your workers, and where you're going to put your cubes. Uh, workers in this game are going to be these little discs right here. At the beginning of every round, you're going to get four of these discs. You can get more or less depending on if people dislike you or think you're winning or if you make pieces of artwork in the city, which is this area right here. So this is Florenza. And uh, I'm going to go all over the board and show you all the different things. But as, as you can see, there is a lot on this board. So down here on the bottom left is where you're going to be keeping track of victory points. And this is not your normal victory point tracker because you will be going back to zero quite frequently on this victory track. Because at the end of every round, whoever is highest on the victory point track is going to get to be the uh, Apatona di Popolona which I don't know exactly what that means, but you're going to be this guy right here, which gives you a special ability for next round, but it knocks you back down to zero victory points. Now, this isn't a big deal, though, because you get these guys right here, uh, and you can take as many victory points as you have these. So if you had fifth, if you were on 15 on the track, you take these three fives right here. So you still have those 15 victory points, but now you're back down to zero. So this is essentially going to be a special ability that is going to be floating from round to round to round, because once you get it, you will get knocked back down to zero. Very cool concept. Now, 
over here on the right side is where you're going to keep track of your religion uh, because you're trying to get super religious because you know they love that sort of thing over in Florenza. Uh, but when you get to three and if you're in first place on this track down here, you get to be this dude. And this will allow you to kind of screw people over because you'll be able to convert their workers to your workers. So you'll be gaining an extra worker and they will be losing a worker. This guy also can do that as well. Uh, in addition, and I'll just talk about their special abilities right now, if you're this guy, you will always get to go first on the turn order track. So let's see if I can get it up there and show you. Because right there, he is on the turn order track. And if you're the bishop, you always get to go second on the turn order track right there as long as you have it. Now, the other interesting thing about the, uh, the bishop down here is he doesn't go back to zero. So if you are in first place on this track, you will be here uh, for at least two rounds. If you're in first place twice, then you become a cardinal. You get five victory points immediately, and you go back to zero. But still, five victory points is, is pretty nice as well. So these will dictate you getting special actions and also dictate you going first on your turn. And one really cool thing I like about this game is that if you get both of these, so if you're high on both these tracks, you can go first and second on a turn, which is actually really kind of cool. But anywho, let's start talking about the rest of the board because we got a lot to talk about. So the board is very busy, if you could not tell. This is where you're going to be keeping track, uh, keeping all of your cubes. But this is also where you're going to be creating beautiful works of art. So I talked about at the beginning, uh, I talked a little bit about at the beginning of each round, you are going to get four workers. And it actually shows you right down here what you're going to be getting of each round. At the beginning of each round, you're going to get four workers. You're going to get 200 bucks. You're going to get a brown cube. You're going to get a white cube. You're going to roll a die and then get whatever that resource is. But if you complete a piece of artwork out here in the city of Florenza, you are going to be gaining something in addition to that at the beginning of each round. So, for instance, this one is going to move you up on the religion track at the beginning of each round. This one's going to give you an extra worker. Uh, this one will give you a victory point. This one will give you, you know, maybe a cube or maybe allow you to trade a cube and get money for it. Various different spots will give you different special abilities that you will be able to get at the beginning of each round. But building these structures is going to be difficult because you yourself are not actually an artist in this game, which means you need to hire artists, which is when we're going to tilt the camera over to here. This is going to be, uh, I guess you'd call it helpwanted.com or something like this. This is where you are going to hire the artist to go ahead and build your structure. So let's say that you wanted to build a structure over here on the board, and it requires that you have, uh, let's actually look at one real quick. So sculptics right here. You need to be able to sculpt. You need to have two white cubes, an orange cube, and what is this, $200. So you have the two white cubes, you have two orange cubes, you got the $200, no biggie, but you need to make sure that you hire a sculptor. So let's take a look over here at the biro. So however many players you have is going to dictate how many people are going to be over here on the higher row over here. So we're looking for someone who can sculpt. So this guy right here, he cannot sculpt, so we would not want to hire him. This guy is a priest right here. They actually don't do any artwork, but they can give you more workers for one turn. So this guy will give you four extra workers for a turn, which is huge and an orange cube, but you do have to pay him 150 bucks. Uh, so let's see. The only sculptor I see on the board is this guy right here, who, who's pretty expensive at 200 bucks. Also, there's going to be two general artists. Just think of them as like background musicians or a backup musicians kind of. And they will be down here and you can hire them as well. So this guy's good for sculpting, painting, religion, what have it. But we're going to spend some money. We're going to go ahead and hire this guy right here. So what we would do is we would take this off of there. Let's go back over to this spot right here. Uh, we would put it on top of there with one of our workers, and this would be our placement of a worker. And then we would be able to build this later on. So how do you build it? When you get to the uh, the artwork phase, you're going to pay the goods. So you have to pay the person, so you're going to have to pay them 200 bucks. You're going to have to pay 200 bucks to build this. You turn it to white cubes, you turn it to orange cubes. Then you're going to put your little marker right here, which is going to give you four victory points immediately, but also at the beginning of every round, a holy point for down there. So you're going to be totally holy this game, which is a great thing as well. Also, this is a particular spot where now you can put preachers here because, as I mentioned, the priests or preachers or popes or rabbis or whatever they are are going to allow you to get more workers. And normally, the only spot you can do that is this spot right here on your player board so 
that's what you're going to be doing on your turn. You're going to be placing workers to either do artwork, to gain cubes, or to build more structures. And the other structures are right here. And as you can see, there are a lot of structures in this game. And what's nice is the game comes with this little cheat sheet right here, which looks like a giant jumbled mess. But once you know what you're doing, it's actually very clear and concise what it does do. Uh, but it's going to show you all the different cubes in the game. It'll even highlight if there's only one of those in a game. It will show you how much it costs right here it's going to show you how many victory points it will give you for building it and then it will show you its special ability so for instance this one right here you turn in two of those colored cubes you get 500 bucks which is pretty nice this one will give you religion points so on and so forth and when you build something what you're going to do is you're going to take your board and you should have already two on here so let's just pretend that these are the two on here you are going to flip it over backwards and you're going to put a worker on it and on the back side as i think i mentioned earlier it will show you how much it costs and then the next round uh this will be a building that you will be able to utilize and also other people will be able to utilize and that's one thing i don't remember if i mentioned it is the fact that when you build something on your structure it is not just yours other people can use these as well but when they go here they have to give you one of their victory points so that they go down one on the victory point track and you go up one on the victory point track so now that we talked about nearly all that let's start over and let's do the round summary and i'll show you exactly how everything works so uh round summary part one you're going to collect your income which is always going to be this down here in addition to any other bonuses that you might be getting for either building uh various different artworks or also having these purple buildings right here. So these purple buildings, you don't place workers on them. These will just persistently give you bonuses. So this will give you more money and another worker. The purple ones are really nice. So you're going to collect your income. Then you are going to figure out who is the captain of the people. The captain of the people is going to be the person that is first on this victory point track they are going to get the captain of the people card which i showed you a little bit earlier and then they're also going to get to do their special ability if they would like there's a tie nobody gets it they're also going to be going first in the round next you're going to figure out who is first place on the bishop track aka the religious track down here as long as someone has passed three they will be the new bishop which means they get the bishop card that looks like this except it's a bishop they will get to go second and then they can do their special ability which is to convert someone else's worker over into their worker so essentially someone else loses a worker and you gain a worker or to make it so that another priest a rival priest or preacher is not available to use this round uh then you're going to do your worker placement. Everyone's going to place their workers. You're going to do all the actions in the market. And there's two other spots I completely forgot to talk about. They're pretty simple. This spot over here will give you 50 coins when you go to it. This spot over here will allow you to trade in your cubes for money or your money for cubes or your cubes for more cubes or various other different things. Uh, so that's how you're going to be able to get cubes that you might not be able to get. You will do your district activities, which means if you are building buildings over here, you will flip them over and pay the cost. Or if you're doing artwork over here, you will do that as well. Uh, and then you will do the artwork, which is all the various different things in the middle, like this that we talked a little bit about earlier. You will figure out the turn order and it will be the end of the round. So what is the upkeep at the end of the round? It's actually pretty simple. What you're gonna do over here is you're gonna take all these guys and gals and you're going to slide them one down on this on the time age track right here so boom boom oh and also i forgot to mention that once at the end of the round you're going to return these back here so one person could do that and uh when someone finally goes off the board you will draw a new person out of this bag right here and put their new card in whatever age they appear and they will be out here now one last thing i forgot to mention is that when i built this piece of artwork right here what i should have done was i should have rolled the dice because we had this guy right here who helped paint us and if you go for one of these famous guys right here, they can score you a lot of extra victory points. So let's roll the dice and see what happens. So I would get a one, and since we did sculpture, that means we would get three extra victory points because we chose to use this guy and didn't choose to use this guy, who is cheaper, uh, but at the same time, you know, so we would actually lose <laughs> one fame because this guy stinks at what he does. Now, the other cool aspect of this game is the fact that if you ever roll the yellow number, like this guy has a six, then you will create his masterpiece. So you get six victory points, and then you will flip it over. He can never top his one masterpiece piece of artwork. So there definitely is an advantage to going with these guys instead of going with the uh, just the basic 
backup artist over here. But anywho, you're going to go over eight rounds. After eight rounds, you're going to tally up the victory points. You'll get money for uh, coins you have. I think it's 300 bucks equals a victory point. You'll get different points for artwork and whether or not you built your... Um, your artwork in your cities or not, and whoever has the most victory points will be the winner of Florenza. And holy moly, that in a jumbled nutshell is how you're going to play Florenza. Alrighty then, Florenza from Placentia Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, two to five players, but at four to five players, the game can be very, very long. And also, when you're first learning the game, the game will take a long time, especially because this game can lend itself to analysis paralysis. There's lots of moving parts and lots of different things going on, and the game can be you know, pretty unforgiving if you screw up. Like, if you forget to pay your artists, it's just like, oh, man, now I can't build that artwork. So I was banking on getting this, but now I'm not going to get this, and I'm going to lose victory points, and this. And it's a real bummer, and the fact that the game is slightly unforgiving is going to lead to some people having even more analysis paralysis because they're going to want to make sure that they don't screw up. But that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. But I will say, four and five players, the game does go long. It's still a fantastic four and five player game, but I did want to mention it. Uh, Component-wise, I had a couple qualms with the components. First, I know some people are going to complain because these are like paper thin, these victory point money things. That really did bug me though because I thought it was going to bug me because they're so thin. But honestly, once you earn these, you never touch them again. So they just go down in front of you. And the fact that they're paper thin really didn't come into play. But the problem that I had is sometimes it's difficult to see everything on the board, especially the little tiles that other people have on their parts of the city because you can place your workers there. And that's a perfectly viable option to place your workers on other people's spots, but it's really difficult to see everybody's spot because the symbology is so teeny tiny. I mean, the symbology on the board is decently sized. For the most part, you can see that as long as there's not a glare or anything. But when you're trying to look at other people's boards, it pretty much just devolves down to, hey, does anybody have a green spot? Is it, does anybody produce green cubes on their thing? And that can be slightly annoying. I wish they would have made the symbology a little bit larger and the pictures a little bit smaller. Uh, another comment I have with this game is that, yes, while it is heavily thematic and it really is dripping with theme, it's still a very dry, boring game if you do not get into the theme. Me, personally, I'm not a fan of religion. I'm not a fan of artwork that much or at least learning about the history of either of them. So this theme was incredibly dry to me. You're planning as a city planner, trying to hire artist blah 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 yes it's nice that these are all real people and you can read in the back of the book about who they are but the theme just did not grab me but obviously if you're into this time period then i think the theme is going to be a real selling point because the creators of this game clearly put a lot of effort into making this game heavily thematic it reminds me a little bit of like lewis and clark where you can feel uh the love that was put into this game and for this time period any other cons I have for the game? Oh, um, if you're not a fan of attacking in Euros, then this one might rub you a little bit the wrong way. It's not a heavy attack game by any stretch of the imagination. But the leader of the people and the Pope are essentially going to be able to take away one of your workers each time. And if both of them collude together, uh, let's say you're in first place, you can potentially lose two of your four workers. Now, hopefully you're going to be gaining workers in different ways, so it's not a big deal. But it is something that I did want to mention. It doesn't become a huge problem, though, because... Um, those those roles are generally going to be rotating like you can only be Pope two times in a row and then you become the card and only get the victory points and you can only get the victory point uh, the leader of the band or whatever the heck it's called uh, every turn pretty much every other turn at, at the very least because the person who's in first place is going to become the leader but then they're going to go back down to zero points which I think is really ingenious but we'll talk more about that in the pros any other cons that I have with the game Oh, the rule booklet, I do have one small problem with the rule booklet. It's a very well done rule booklet, but it kind of assumes you know a little too much for my liking. Like it'll say, oh, the only other spot you can do this is in the cathedral spot, in the, in the cathedral. And I'm like, I don't know which spot on the board is the cathedral. I eventually figured it out that it's actually the spot in the middle, but still just say it's in the Duomo, in the Pulpito Predigatora. And no, I didn't make up any of those words I just used. That's actually what they need to put in the rule booklet because that's where it goes. Any other cons? Any other cons? Talked about the symbology. Tons of symbology. You'll get it after a couple rounds. Moving on to the pros. Florenza is a fantastically designed game, and I can enjoy it, and I do recommend it. And I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this game. That's, that's just about it. But that being said, you have to go into this game knowing it is very dry if you do not like the theme, that it is a cube pusher, that it is slightly unforgiving, that it can be a little bit mean, 
but still like you play this game it's just one of those games you're like wow this is an exquisitely designed game the way everything works all the different parts all the different pieces so what do i like about the game so first and foremost i love the age track i love how you can hire these different artists and and you know maybe it costs a little bit extra money but they can also get you a lot more extra victory points just by hiring those artists but then i also like the fact that there's these artists down here at the bottom that you always have access to as long as you get that i love how the first player track works how if you're the leader of the band you get to go first and if you're the, the bishop then you get to go second and everybody else is stuck after that and i love how the leader and the bishop works i think that's a really cool concept of being able to have this special ability but then you get struck back down to zero points really enjoy how that works and i feel like it's just it's, it's just the way they implemented it works so well component wise uh you know everything's pretty serviceable these are nice thick sturdy tiles and the money's nice the cards are nice you know the paper thin victory point trackers isn't a huge deal but it is something of note uh the board in front of you is nice as well and i like the fact that you have your own little city here and you have to try and focus on that city as much as you want to go to this middle part and start you know banking up all this extra stuff you're going to get at the beginning of turn you still cannot neglect this area or else you will lose points at the end of the game and i like that i like the variety of different buildings and how each one has its own unique little charms and quirk and this thing oh my goodness this thing is a lifesaver i would have a hard time recommending this game without this player aid card there's five of them included so everybody's going to get one so that is very helpful at all it tells you all the different spots on the board it tells you all the different uh tiles that you can build and i really like how the worker placement works in this game how it's like all right we're doing spot one and spot two and spot three and spot four and spot five and it's really important that you pay attention to where you place those buildings on your build track and which spots uh, I, I just i can't say enough about it everything works together there is just so much room for error in this game where like one little mistake here one little mistake there and the designers part could have screwed it up but they did not and wow it is an exceptionally done heavy euro game and this is you know it says 90 minutes to two hours if you're playing with three four five players you're never going to do this i think in under two hours unless everybody knows exactly what they're doing um I, I like the masterpiece concept as well so when someone gets a certain die roll and that's another thing i forgot to mention in the con some people are not going to like the dice rolling and if you don't like the dice rolling for the various different um the different masterpieces then they have a non-dice rolling variant i didn't try it out because i like the dice rolling i like the fact that you know i might get uh negative one or i might get one or i might get three or i might get six i like those swings and points but some people might not like that but overall in the end i feel like i'm babbling florenza is fantastic is it for everybody no absolutely not it's very dry it's very heavy it's pretty lengthy uh it's a little bit difficult to explain all the different parts going on you need to make sure you explain all of them clearly it's a little bit unforgiving but man if you can get past all that florenza is definitely one you're going to want to check out or if you enjoy this time period and you like heavier games absolutely you're going to want to check this one out because the theme does come across pretty well even though the theme eh, doesn't really excite me that much if you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know, does this theme a theme that does it for you? Personally, no, not, not at all. But still, I can get past that for how great of a game it is. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, Mid-Eastern, Middle Roman, whatever time period this is, painting and sculpting, is it for you? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.